Good afternoon and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today is Thursday, the eighth week in Ordinary Time. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 726, A Living Faith, number 726, A Living Faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good afternoon. Today we celebrate a great saint, Saint Justin Martyr. He was one of the earliest of Christian apologists in the sense that he was a philosopher who tried to explain the Christian faith to those who were not yet believers. And as a result of his standing for the faith, he died for the faith, he died for the truth. So brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the folly of the cross wondrously taught St. Justin the Martyr the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ, grant us through his intercession that having rejected deception and error, we may become steadfast in the faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of Sirach. Now will I recall God's works. What I have seen, I will describe. At God's words, there were his works brought into being, 
they do his will as he has ordained for them. As the rising sun is clear to all, so the glory of the Lord fills all his works. Yet even God's holy ones must fail in recounting the wonders of the Lord. Though God has given these, his hosts, the strength to stand firm before his glory, he plumbs the death and penetrates the heart, their innermost being he understands. The Most High possesses all knowledge and sees from of old things that are to come. He makes known the past and the future and reveals the deepest secrets. No understanding does he lack. No single thing escapes him. Perennial is his almighty wisdom. He is from all eternity one and the same, with nothing added, nothing taken away, no need of a counselor for him. How beautiful are his works, even to the spark and fleeting vision. The universe lives and abides forever. To meet each need, each creature is preserved. All of them differ one from another, yet none of them has he made in vain. For each in turn, as it comes, is good. Can one ever see enough of their splendor? The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way, your faith has saved you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know that it's often recommended for young people, or maybe we say younger people, but it's good to have a grounding in the book of Proverbs. For ways to live, it's good to have grounding in the book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs, we can read, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One, understanding. The knowledge of God and the knowledge of God's ways is life itself. This produces fear, a sort of unending awe, to contemplate the Lord and to contemplate the Lord's ways brings us to awe. But how many people are in awe these days? Yesterday, you may recall, I pointed out three contemporary issues that could spell the end of life as we have known it. The U.S. debt crisis, the war in Ukraine, and the further implementation of artificial intelligence. I don't think, though, even though it seems that way, I don't believe the situation to be hopeless or desperate. I think it's sad, very sad, tremendously sad, and why? Because we're doing this to ourselves. Those three things that I mentioned are not being inflicted on us by some strange power from outer space or something like that. All these things we're doing to ourselves. And it need not be so. The thing that we're remembering, celebrating today, St. Justin can be a good model and inspiration for all of us. He was born of Greek or Roman parents and studied, studied various philosophies. He was a philosopher, philosophos, a lover of wisdom. And so he was seeking to know. And so he studied uh, various ph philosophies, Stoic, Peripatetic, Pythagorean, and Platonic. And these are all natural philosophies. These are all ways
ways of seeking the truth by natural human reasoning. In Ephesus, he met a man who introduced him to something completely different. He introduced him to the Hebrew Bible. He told him, you are a lover of beautiful speech, but you are certainly not a friend of action or of truth. Can you imagine that? That must have stung him. You know, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, those things are all very pretty and they sound very lofty and nice, but you are not a friend of the truth. Hmm. He eventually, in time, became a Christian, was put on trial defending his faith, and as a result, he was executed because of it. But nowadays, and I'm seriously asking you this question, nowadays, how many people bother with truth? Maybe we can see ourselves sort of like Pilate, you know, at Jesus' trial. What is truth? Who has time for truth? Who wants to be bothered with truth? We claim that so much of what we are told is a lie. They are lying to us. Yet, we go along with it. We complain about it and go along with it. And this is the issue, the bottom line, as they say. We are willing to live with lies. We put up with it. We tolerate it. We are willing to live with lies. People lie to us, we lie to them, and we lie to ourselves. We prefer to live with convenience rather than truth. And isn't that why people lie? Why do people tell lies? Because it's convenient. Oh, I could get out of trouble. I could avoid you know, a confrontation. I could smooth the way for myself. As they say, you know, by flattery, you can get everything. You know, so why tell the truth and get yourself in trouble? Why not just lie? Everybody's doing it. But listen, brothers and sisters, if you have nothing to die for, you have nothing to live for. If you have nothing for which you are willing to die, you also have nothing for which you're willing to live. This blind beggar, Bartimaeus, and it's interesting that the scriptures tell us that he was named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. Well, Bartimaeus means the son of Timaeus. I mean, you know, it seems like kind of redundant. Like, why would you say the son of Timaeus is named Bartimaeus? Well, yeah, that Bartimaeus means son of Timaeus. But I think what's going on here is the name Timaeus means honor. It means honor. And it says Bartimaeus sat by the roadside begging. He was the son of honor, but yet he's blind and finds himself begging. This son of honor heard Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth was on the road. I love it, on the road. The word in Greek for road is hodon. That's why we have the book of Exodus is exodos, the way out. So Jesus is on the road, but Jesus also is the road. Jesus is the way. And we are told that this Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was on the way. So he begged him to have mercy, called him son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? He says, I want to see. It's so wonderful, you know, when you, you see what happened. They told him, take courage, Jesus is calling you. Come on, take courage. Jesus is calling you. And what does he do in response? He throws aside his cloak. He sprang up and came to Jesus. It's beautiful. Whatever he was wearing, whatever his former life was, whatever led him to be dishonorable, 
He threw it all aside, and he came to Jesus as he was. He heard Jesus calling him, and he came to Jesus as he was. He sprang up, the same word used for resurrection. He sprang up to a new life and came to Jesus. Just imagine, his faith was already answering. He was already being healed by Jesus just by hearing him, calling him, and responding to change his life. Jesus said, go on your way, your faith has saved you. It says he followed him on the way. He was no longer on the side of the road. Not only was he on the road, but he was on the way, following Jesus, who is the way. He had no sight, and he had no light. He had to live off of the life of other people. Through Jesus, he received the revealed truth, and he saw the light. He heard Jesus calling, he threw off his old way, he sprang up and he came to Jesus, and Jesus gave him the light. So this is the real problem, brothers and sisters. We are blinded by lies. We are completely engulfed in delusion. And you wonder why so many people are lonely? You know why people are lonely? Because they cannot trust themselves to anyone. We can't tell the truth about who we are to anyone because we don't tell the truth, they don't tell the truth, and so we don't entrust ourselves to anyone. People are not honorable, people are not dignified, and people are not respectful. And somehow it's fashionable to be this way. It's all pretend. It's all a sham. And we put up with it. As a spiritual director told me many years ago, he said, Brian, we are only as sick as our secrets. We are only as sick as our secrets. From the Gospel of John, this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds was, were evil. Jesus is calling you. He's on the road, and we're on the, we're on the side, and Jesus is calling us. Are you going to throw away the old life, throw away the lies, throw away the deception, throw away all the non-truth, all the trying to get by, trying to be convenient? Are you willing to throw it all away and face the truth, face the light, face the truth about yourself, and come to Jesus. Could you live in the truth? Could you step out of darkness? Without the truth, how could the statement, I love you, ever have? any meaning. Let us stand to pray. As a community of faith, seeking to open our eyes to the call of Christ, we join together to present our needs to the Father. For Pope Francis, for Bishop Brennan, and all clergy who are charged with leading the church in the modern world, may God infuse them with his wisdom and the grace they need to answer their call. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in government positions throughout the world, May God lead them in the ways of wise decision-making. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer from the ravages of war or violence, may God comfort them and heal their pain. 
Let us pray to the Lord. For the elderly in this faith community who suffer the challenges of aging, may God send them his consolation and inspire others to be sensitive to their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. For Landon Sturdivant and Ronald Rizzuto Jr., that the healing power of God bring them to the fullness of health, let us pray to the Lord. For the health and recovery of Anne Goshen, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. And for all who have died, may God welcome them among the saints and the angels as they enter eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we present our petitions before you, knowing that you will grant us all that we truly need through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may celebrate worthily these mysteries which St. Justin strenuously defended through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Justin, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus told us that he is the way and the truth and the life. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 737, Amazing Grace. Number 737, Amazing Grace.
Let us pray. Refreshed by heavenly food, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of St. Justin the Martyr, we may abide at all times in thanksgiving for the gifts we have received through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God, and have a most blessed day. Thank you. Our closing hymn is number 742. There's a wideness in God's mercy. Number 742, there's a wideness in God's mercy, verse 2.